Namaste. Namaste. This way? Thank you. Namaste. Can you to shake your hand? No, okay. We've pre-arranged our filming and we're compensating the Raute for their time. But there's an uneasiness in the camp and no one's very keen to engage with me. <laughs> what do you want me to do with it? Do you want me to buy it? I want to know first, who taught you to carve? The banana. I don't want to buy it yet. Maybe another day. Ah, tobacco. It seems at the moment that I am being seen a little bit like a human ATM and uh, everything is about money. Everything, you know, that's a nice bowl. Yes, you can buy it, you know. I'll be welcoming to you if you pay me. Which is, I suppose, not that surprising, really, given that uh, there's been so little uh, contact with foreigners. It's going to take time to win their trust. But, as is often the case, it's the children who seem the most intrigued. <laughs> Ready? The crew and I are camping a short walk from the Raute settlement. Today's been a really tough day. At one point, I, I, I tried to uh, shake a woman's hand and she absolutely wouldn't have anything to do with me. No eye contact. She physically turned away. <clears throat> and that's, that's uh, quite hard to deal with. But it would be lovely to feel at some point that there is a genuine connection and interaction that isn't just paid for. Today, the Raute have decided to move. Namaste. Do you want me to help? It's not clear why they're moving, but with such simple dwellings and very few possessions, it's a quick process packing up camp. You tell me what to do. OK, so what would you like me to do? Excellent. It's all going very, very well. It is so frustrating. I want to help and make friends, but to the Raute, I still represent only one thing. A 
I feel very guilty not carrying anything, particularly when you see these little kids walking up with their human loads. But at the moment, they so, still don't really know what to do with me, and I suppose I don't really know how to break the barriers down. OK? You go ahead. She looks very, very pregnant, and although this pole weighs nothing, just feel... You want to take it? Sure? OK. And then a small breakthrough. I thought that if I waited long enough at the side of the road looking empty-handed, someone would eventually give me something to carry. It feels like a tiny, tiny step to being allowed in. It's all going quite well. I've gained a pole and a goat. It's hard work we're doing this in the hottest part of the day. I'm trying very hard not to show any sign of weakness whatsoever when you've got little things like this probably carrying more than their body weight. Just pop that down. Oh. <laughs> there are four Raute chiefs, each elected by the community. One of them, Ayn Badu, has asked me to go with him to collect wood. You need more? <laughs> We're going this way. Yes. Here? This one? for three days now. It's hard getting to know them, but I am starting to understand their sense of identity. In Raute culture, only the men carve, but everyone gets involved in trading, and they seem happy enough for me to help finish these bowls for market. We're taking the bowls to the local village of Godabas, where a trader is waiting to buy them. Like that? Yeah. Good. I head off with Beer Badu's sons. It's a two hour walk to the village up yet more ridiculously steep hills. to walk to the village shops. <sighs> I thought I was reasonably fit and reasonably strong and I couldn't beat a five-year-old. It's funny, out of their camp, the atmosphere is very different. People seem to be a bit more open and friendly towards me. Um, generally a bit more chatty, a bit more eye contact from the women, a bit of smiling. <sighs> Maybe it's just the excitement of being near a shop with tobacco and fizzy drinks, though. <laughs> 